As we've already noted, in order for firms to produce something, they have to incur some type of cost. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this particular section. We've already talked about explicit and implicit cost, but we want to break away from that convention just a little bit and talk about cost a little bit more in general. Here, when we talk about total cost, we're going to be talking about the sum of fixed cost and variable cost. Fixed costs, also called overhead, are costs that do not vary with the quantity produced. So these are things that we're going to be paying for if the business is open or if the business is closed or if the business produces, say, one unit versus one million units. They're always going to be paying these fixed costs no matter what. So what do you think would be a few examples of these fixed costs? Just thinking about it, just thinking about it in general. So for these fixed costs, we're going to denote it with a shorthand FC right here. These fixed costs can be seen things like rent or your mortgage payment. So rent or your lease payment. You're going to have to pay the whoever owns the building your rent payment or your lease payment, no matter if your firm is going to be producing 10 units, 100 units, 100 million units. It doesn't really matter if you're open or closed. You have to pay it no matter what. Other example may be, say, your car payment. So car payment. Your vehicle sort of payment as well. Basically, it just says that, hey, it doesn't matter if you're open or closed. You still have to pay this no matter what. And these costs typically are going to stay constant over time. The other type of cost is going to vary. And that's where the name comes from, the variable cost. These are going to rise as the level of output increases. So here, if you produce one unit, you have some amount of money that you need to pay. But this cost is going to rise if you produce more, say 10 units, 1,000 units, a million units. These are going to rise. And that's what we denote as your variable cost. So here we have variable costs. And these variable costs will denote it shorthand VC right here. These can include essentially a lot of different things. They can include your utilities, utilities. If you want to go ahead and produce more of a particular product, you probably are going to incur a lot more utilities costs, so electricity, water, etc. We can go ahead and take a look at your labor wages, so labor wages. If you want to go ahead and produce more, you're going to have to hire more workers, and therefore, you're going to have higher wages. And also, like materials, so raw materials, you want to produce more, you need more raw materials, therefore your variable costs go up as well. So fixed costs always remain fixed. They are constant no matter if the business is open or closed or whether or not you produce a lot of goods or not a lot of goods. Variable costs, these are things that are going to vary depending on how much is actually being produced. When we take the sum of both of these, fixed cost plus variable cost, this will exactly give us our total cost. So here, fixed cost plus variable cost will give us total cost. And that is exactly what we're going to be honing in on in this particular section. So once again, know the similarities and differentiation between fixed cost and variable cost. And just to sort of complete this thought process, go ahead and take a look at this particular example with the office just to make sure that you understand what. So as you can see right here, we take a, home, take a look at the difference between a fixed cost and a variable cost with the business expanding, the variable costs are going to be increasing while the fixed costs are going to remain constant as the business sort of operations go along. So once again, fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost. Another example of this is going to be, say, a yacht or a cruise ship. Uh, building the cruise ship itself is going to be seen as a fixed cost. The cost does not change based on the number of actual passengers on board, but something that would be considered a variable cost would be something like, hey, how about the food? So here, the more and more passengers that the cruise ship is going to have, the higher the food costs are going to be. So therefore, it is seen as a variable cost. Notice that we are not going to be talking a lot about the sunk cost. We remember we talked about the sunk cost fallacy, but sunk costs are not going to be included in any business decision making sort of strategy at all. So we leave them to the wayside. There are more costs that we are going to be sort of interested in taking, taking a look at, and there are a whole bunch of variables uh, and a whole bunch of equations and formulas that do go along with it. One of the most important variables we hone in on is the marginal cost. So once again, the key word marginal, the additional cost, the change in total cost from the production of one more unit of output. So when we change the quantity, we want to see exactly how much our cost, our total cost are going to be changing. So once again, marginal cost, that key word, we are very interested in marginal measures. So with marginal cost, MC will denote it as shorthand. It's the change in total cost, change in total cost, divided by the change in quantity, change in quantity quantity. So once again, we're going to be taking some type of differences. Change in TC 
over change and quantity. And because there are going to be a lot of relationships that do develop between all of these cost variables, we can go ahead and calculate marginal cost using this formula that we have right here, but through a different manner. So one thing that we can go ahead and do is take this TC plus FC, TC equals FC plus VC equation and manipulate it just a little bit. So TC equals FC plus VC. And one thing that we can do is use the rules of algebra in order to help us out in this regard. So when we go ahead and divide everything by Q, that's going to maintain our equality. So divide this by Q, divide this by Q, and divide this by Q as well. So here, this is still going to maintain our equality because what we did to the left-hand side also matches up on the right-hand side as well. However, we can also do the differences right here. We can also introduce the changes or these deltas right here to every single component of our equation and, or, and it will still maintain the same exact sort of um, algebraic sort of distribution behind it. So if we do change in TC, put change on the bottom and the denominator in Q as well and do it to the right hand side it's still going to maintain our equality. And don't really uh, be too concerned about deriving this. We're just using the rules of algebra to help us out here in order to say that, hey, there's going to be different ways to actually take a look at marginal cost. When we have the change in TC over the change in Q on the left-hand side, that's exactly what marginal cost is equal to. So marginal cost, that's exactly equal to marginal cost. However, just as we've learned, when we, ch when we change the quantity, are, is the fixed, are the fixed costs going to change at all? Remember that fixed costs are always going to remain constant no matter what. So it doesn't matter if we change quantity, the change in the fixed cost is always going to be equal to zero in this instance. So essentially what we can go ahead and do is eliminate the second component because it equals to zero in this case. We know that fixed costs, fixed costs do not vary with Q. Do not vary with quantity. So essentially all that leaves us with is that the marginal cost is going to equal to the change in variable cost over the change in quantity. And that's another way to go ahead and approach marginal cost as well. Another equation to give you guys. So marginal cost is equal to not only just a change in total cost divided by the change in quantity, but also the change in variable cost divided by the change in quantity. So like I said, it really depends on which method or what type of information is going to be provided to you in order for you to choose the right equation right here. A lot of relationships do develop here. Other type of costs we are going to be concerned about are going to be all these average measures. So average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, which are all just a measure of productivity and efficiency. And once again, we can go ahead and do a little bit of algebraic manipulation to go ahead and solve for the term that we are going to be interested in. So let's go ahead and take a look at the average fixed cost. Average fixed cost first. So average fixed cost. And we're going to denote this with a shorthand AFC. So with average fixed cost, we notice that AFC is equal to fixed cost divided by quantity. So very easy equation. However, suppose that we wanted to solve for fixed cost. What would we have to do in order to isolate this variable alone, just the fixed cost? Well, if you remember algebra, we can go ahead and multiply the Q on both sides to get rid of the denominator. And in order to find fixed cost, it would just go ahead and be the AFC, the average fixed cost, times quantity. So once again, sometimes we may be a little bit interested in finding the average fixed cost. Sometimes we just may be a little bit more interested in finding fixed cost, and we can use algebra to help us out. In terms of average variable costs, variable costs, it's going to be AVC. That's going to be our variable cost divided by quantity. And once again, if we're just interested in solving out for variable cost itself, multiply by Q in order to solve that out to isolate it. So VC equals AVC times quantity. And then finally here, we have average total cost. Average total cost, which is going to be ATC. And that's going to be TC, total cost, divided by quantity. So remember, don't confuse these average measures with the fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost themselves because there is an extra step that is involved with these average measures. If we wanted to solve for TC by itself, go ahead, multiply by Q on both sides. So we get total cost equals ATC times quantity. So once again, 
We have one equation, but you can algebraically manipulate them in order to solve what you are looking for. One last relationship that's going to develop. We had total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. We had this right here, TC equals FC plus VC. But remember, if we divide everything by Q, we get TC divided by Q equals FC divided by Q plus VC divided by Q. And that just is going to give us all these measures that we have right here. So average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. So once again, all of these relationships, all of these equations and formulas are going to be very, very important for us because they do mean slightly different things and they do require just a little bit of algebraic manipulation in order to solve for. So all these costs are going to be in the short run once again. And what are exactly are we going to do with all these equations and formulas? We're going to be using all of them to solve a little bit of a puzzle that we see right here. And we'll get into this example as we use all these equations in the next video.